Head of State declares Ghana's first five-star hotel complex open. President Ramatar gets a first-hand look at Exxon Mobil's drilling operations off the Essequibo coast. And the president hits the campaign trail as he seeks to return to office with a clear parliamentary majority. We'll have the details of these and other presidential activities in this week's edition of the diary for the period April 11 to April 17, 2015. I'm Paul McAdam. President Ramatar took his message of the need for cheap, reliable and sustainable energy to Bartico residents at a PPPC rally on April 11. Cheaper electricity for Guyanese is a main priority for the Donald Ramatar administration as it gears up to contest the May 11th general and regional elections. The head of state assured that once re-elected, the People's Philosophy Party Civic will ensure it becomes a reality. At the moment, the government subsidizes electricity by about $9 billion a year so that you will not have to pay higher light bill or the business people will not have to pay higher light bill. When we get power from hydroelectricity, immediately your light bill will come down by 20 to 40 percent and you will be able to earn more money just by having the hydropower. But more than that, we will save the subsidy. We will save the subsidy that we have been doing putting into the electricity sector. And with that saving, we can solve all the problems of roads, of roads, of drainage, of garbage. And then with one year saving, with one year saving, we can solve many of the problems that we have. Cheaper power, the president said, will lend itself towards the creation of an industrial manufacturing sector. To create jobs, highly technical jobs. That is why we have been investing in technical institutes and why we have a program in the Ministry of Labor to ensure that those who drop out of schools will also have some technical education and can make a living or acquire a job. That is why we have been doing these things. We can transform our agriculture into now being agro-industrial complexes. That is what we want to do. And that is what they cut from the budget. The president noted that his government's efforts were frustrated and thwarted by the political opposition which did not support the project in the National Assembly. The opposition leader in Parliament and presidential candidate for the Partnership for National Unity Party, Brigadier Retired David Granger, now has had a change of heart. During his recent campaigning, he recently stated that once elected, his party will now work on a similar project. He had an opportunity if he wanted to have hydroelectricity. He had an opportunity to vote for it in Parliament. As we mentioned, we would have been building that now. But they fought it against it. Comrades, these men will do anything to get power. In addition to the restructuring of the traditional sectors like rice and sugar, the president said the mining sector will be improved. The PPPC government has operated in the interest of all Guyanese for decades, the president stated, and will continue to do so. During a brief visit to the New Testament Church of God's 50th annual National Convention at the National Cultural Center, President Ramatar called on the congregation to pay for peace, progress and prosperity especially as Ghana heads into general and regional elections. On April 12, the head of state graced the congregation and congratulated the church on its significant anniversary. Allow me to congratulate you on your 58th convention. That is very important that you know a very matured group. I'm no longer a teenager. A very, very matured group. And I want to thank you personally for the role that you have been playing in forging cohesion in our society. That is extremely important because, as you know, we live in a multi-ethnic, multicultural, multiracial country. And promoting unity, promoting togetherness, working towards building from many to build one, give meaning, give true meaning to our 
our motto of one people, one nation, one destiny. The everyone should play a role. And this church has been playing a tremendous role and that can be seen from the very composition that we see here this afternoon. So congratulations to you on that. Speaking of some of the social work the church has been doing as well, the president told the congregation that much of it ties in with the social policies of government and he encouraged the church to keep up with the good work. I'm aware of many of the social work that you have been doing, the orphanage that you had and many of the other social work that you do on behalf of the poor. And we know too from the teachings of the Bible that Jesus gave very, very high prior priority to working with the poor to alleviate their sufferings and to take them out of poverty. And that way, I find it very easy to partner with you in many of the activities that you have been, that you have been having. I know that the government has been working with you in the help of the orphanage as much as we can. President Ramatar also took the time to talk about some of his administration's social policies, all aimed at enhancing the lives of Guyanese. He told the congregation that it is a deliberate act on the part of his administration to give the social sector the largest chunk of the national budget. He added that his administration will continue to give support to the church's social programs and urge members to stay with the work that they have been doing. Before a well-attended crowd in the Linden Township, President Ramatar, with days left before Ghana's next regional and national elections, reminded Lindeners of how important this election is for Guyana's development. A large crowd gathered at the Lean Kin Pen Square in Wisma, Linden, to listen to the lineup of candidates from the People's Progressive Party Civic. In his message to the gathering, the President said that this election should be about the future of Guyana and its youths. We are here tonight because on May 11th, we have to ensure that the course that Guyana is on, that we will continue on that course, and you will vote for the PPP Civic for another victory in our country. Elections are about records, and elections are about the future. We have a proud record that we can stand on. We don't have to hide from our past. We don't need to change our name. The only people who change their names are criminals and bandits and scamps. President Ramatar pointed out that when they took over government, they were faced with a bankrupt country, which is now performing much better economically. He spoke of some of the deliberate acts to sabotage what he termed the welfare of Ghana and its people referred to the opposition's non-support for the anti-money laundering and conquering and financing of terrorism bill and the Amalia Hydro Falls project, among others. Every way, every way they tried to prevent us from going forward. But still, we grew every year by 45 and 5% per annum. But had we, had we had the majority in the parliament, or if we had a minimum cooperation from them, we could have been growing at about 10% per annum. But comrades, after the government is re-elected, when we re elected on May 11th of this year, we will build more projects to ensure that we create more jobs for our people, more places for our people, more educational levels for our people. Because we want, we want to attract investment in Guyana. Not because of cheap labor. We want to attract investment because we have a highly developed and educated workforce. We want to be like a Japan where we, we attract investment on the cutting edge of technology. The president reminded residents that all have benefited from government's efforts to improve the lives of all Guyanese across Guyana. Going forward, the president said that among the administration plans, if re-elected, will be to keep Guyana along its growth path with new initiatives, more job creation and policies, all aimed at providing a better quality of life for all. 
He called on persons to exercise their right on Elections Day and make the right choice. I ask you not only for your own sake, not only for our sake, but for your children's sake and for the sake of the future of this country. I ask you on May 11th to stand by the PPP Civic, to stand by me and let us take our country forward. Meanwhile, others on the PPPC list of candidates, including former President Bar Jagdeo, Prime Ministerial Candidate Elizabeth Harper, Cabinet Secretary Dr. Roger Luncheon, and Works Minister Robson Ben, took time to address the gathering, all reiterating the plans that the PPPC has to take the country forward. President Donald Ramatar paid a visit to the Exxon Mobile drill ship, the Deep Water Champion, on April 15. The Deepwater Championship is drilling for oil under license from the government of Ghana in the Stabrook block some 120 miles offshore within Ghana's exclusive economic zone. The president and his party traveled by helicopter from the Ogle aerodrome and were given a 360-degree view of the drill ship from above. After a short briefing, the party returned to the Ogle airport. The president was accompanied by Minister of Natural Resources and the Environment, Robert Passad. He is the focal person for government in terms of coordinating with the SO company and coordinator of the visit was Mr. Jeff Simons, the country manager of the SO Exploration and Production Ghana Limited. This company is a local subsidiary of ExxonMobil, the largest publicly traded oil and gas company in the world. The Natural Resources Minister is coordinating the development of a national oil and gas policy on which he has invited and encouraged wild stakeholder participation and comments. Described as a game changer for the hotel and tourism sector, Ghana's first five-star internationally branded hotel complex formally opened on April 16 in Battery Road, Kingston, Georgetown. The hotel, which is Ghana's second largest public-private partnership, has been described as a groundbreaking transformative project that will change the local hotel and tourism landscape by many stakeholders in the sector. I want to tell you what a pleasure it is to be here to celebrate our first Marriott in Guyana. This is a huge deal for our company. And I'm so honored to be here to, uh, to be able to celebrate with you. Um, it's a privilege for us at Marriott to become a part of this community. And we know it, and we know it's a great responsibility. I also want to tell you something that's very special to me personally. Um, I have the opportunity to, to welcome over 200 new Guyanese brothers and sisters into the Marriott family. And they have been through over 300 hours of training to get ready to be able to host brilliantly at this hotel. Um, Mr. Marriott sent a group of us down here specifically to be here at this opening because this hotel is very important to us. It's very close to the heart of our company. And we have a commitment to you and we have a commitment to Guyana. And that's what this key really symbols. This is our commitment. We're here to stay and we are going to take good care of this hotel and we're going to host brilliantly all the guests that come here. We hope Guyanese guests as well as international guests. So President Ramatar. The hotel's formal opening for business was described as very historic for the country by Head of State, President Donald Ramatar. This is indeed a very historic occasion for us to have a world-class hotel here in Guyana. As I've said before, I've visited many hotels in the world and this can compare to any that I've seen anywhere. I want to bring my last to wish to the great success of this enterprise to congratulate the Marion team, the management, and to wish all the best to the management and the staff of the hotel to ensure that it's a resounding success in our country. The Marriott brand is known around the world as one of the most prestigious and quality hotel brands. The hotel chain is present in some 72 countries, comprising more than 3,600 hotels, a staff complement of 129,000. In Guyana, the first five-star hotel to be built in this location, the nine-story establishment will provide employment for some 250 persons in the hospitality business through direct employment and another 100 indirectly. 
This will be accomplished by the utilization of the services of local workers such as electricians and those in the construction field. The 197-room Marriott boasts a large ballroom, conference center, casino, nightclub, restaurant, concrete walkways, and all other amenities of a world-class hotel. The U.S. $51 million project was initially launched in November 2011. You're watching The Diary, where we have been recapping the highlights of the country's president's weekly activities. More after the break. Ghana's crime fighting capacity has been boosted tremendously. A state-of-the-art forensic laboratory, the formation of the country's first ever special weapons and tactical SWAT unit, and institutional strengthening are some aspects of the sector's reforms. Capacity building has played an important role as ranks have received training both locally and overseas to effectively deal with various aspects of crime solving. A message from the Government Information Agency. The Community Development Initiative Plan, CDP, on the Amrini Development Fund is a project introduced by the PPPC administration to secure livelihood for the Amrini villages and hinterland communities. Already 25 communities have received $125 million to embark on agriculture, mining and tourism projects, among several others. Additionally, 161 communities are to benefit in the second phase, which will see $1.3 billion being disbursed. A message from the Government Information Agency. The Amalia Fault Hydropower Project is essential for a vibrant manufacturing sector. Under the flagship of the LCDS, Norway has transferred earnings from its partnership with Guyana, amounting to some 80 million US dollars to the Inter-American Development Bank to fund a part of Guyana's equity share in the project. High amongst the priorities will be ensuring the achievement of more affordable and more reliable energy. Government will deliver the Amalia Fault Hydropower Project along with all of its attendant benefits. It is expected that there will be an achievement of financial closure and commencement of the construction of this project during 2015. A message from the Government Information Agency. The President took time out to meet with residents of the Rupununi during the week. Hinterland residents and students were urged to stay in school and pursue every educational opportunity as this is the tool that will help them to capitalize on any developmental opportunities coming their way. This was the message from President Donald Ramatar when he visited several communities in Region 9, Rupununi, on April 14. The President noted that Ghana's rich diversity in its people is an asset and none of the six races is better than each other, but rather there is need to level the playing field so that all can benefit from development. In our next term, when we win the elections, we will work towards integrating the coast and the interior even more. And we will make traveling on this road a 24-hour traveling. We will build a bridge across the Sikribo River at Kurubukari so that you can move anytime and you don't have to only move in the daytime and wait for a ferry every hour. And that will help. But more than that, we are working with the Brazilians to build a deep water harbor. To build a deep water harbor. And we are trying to pave the road from Linden to Letem. That will open enormous possibility, possibilities for people in Region 8 and 9, it will revolutionize your transportation. It means that we can bring goods now in containers and bring down the cost of living in these areas. We can export goods to Brazil from the coast and you, that will help to stimulate production in these areas and you can have a higher quality of life. He told residents that he is aware of some of the challenges they face and noted that the administration is trying to meet the needs of all the hinterland residents as much as possible to create equal opportunities for all. These efforts, he said, including efforts at reducing poverty, pursuing measures to improve the quality of life of residents and ensuring that there is a highly skilled and educated workforce which will attract more investment into the country, thereby creating more jobs. During the week, the president met with residents of Wakenham, where he outlined government's future developmental plans for the island. Residents of the Region 3 island of Wakenham were urged to do all in their power to keep their dignity and more to keep democracy alive in Guyana. 
During a meeting which was held at the San Susi Junction, President Ramatal told a large gathering that a lot of effort has been put into making Ghana a free country, and it is important to keep it this way. He recalled an incident whilst campaigning for elections during the 1990s when he and other party comrades were literally thrown off of Howe Island by police ranks stationed there. They were then prevented from holding a meeting at the location. Ghana has changed for the better since then, he emphasized. Wickenham thrives mainly on agriculture, and President Ramata reminded the residents that their island has great potential, and his administration will continue to work to help them realize this. We just started to build a new plant on the Esequibo to produce cereal to add value to the rice, add value to the rice, and we are going to build right on this island right on this island and in leg one, chip factories so that you can also add value to your plantings and cassava and so forth that you produce here. And those will help to create more and more jobs. But the information technology is important. We plan to run a submarine cable from Parika to leg one, from leg one to Wakenham, from Wakenham to the Esequibo coast to connect up all the electricity systems so that we can move power from one area to another to try to minimize and eventually to cut out blackout altogether. And in the process, when we're going to do that, we're going to run the cable, the fiber optic cable to connect so that you can have the benefits from modern technology right here on your island. We are already putting degree programs online so people can study, can have a degree online from the University of Guyana. These are the plans that we have. These, this is why this election is so important for all of us. Guyana's athletes have received a substantial boost with the completion of the $5 million National Track and Field Center at Lenora on the west coast of Damarara. During the feature address to mark the opening of the National Track and Field Center at Lenora on the west coast of Damararo, the president congratulated the Ministry of Culture, Youth and Sport for successfully completing the state-of-the-art multi-million dollar multi-purpose center. It is indeed a good time to be young, a very, very good time to be young because of all the facilities that we are putting down to help in the welfare of our country. And this, we hope that sports will not, will bring our country, individuals, our sportsmen and women, will bring them great glory and also bring our country glory as well in their performance, both here and abroad. This facility gives us the possibility of holding mega events in Guyana where we could not have done so in the past. And we know that we will now be exposing our people and our sportsmen and women to more regional and international competition. And many of them, we hope, will take place right here to help inspire our children, inspire our young people to be able to participate in sports and to bring glory to themselves in that regard. President Ramatar highlighted some of the benefits of sports, explaining that those who are fit will gain not only strong bodies but strong minds, which will help with their academic work. And that is why I hope that the Ministry of Education and the Ministry of Sports will work closely together to ensure that sports play a bigger and bigger role in the curriculum of the schools. And moreover, I would like to see all the school sports activities, their track and field activities, being held here on this facility so that it can also serve to inspire them to achieve higher and higher goals. This facility 
is a world-class facility because we believe that our people deserve nothing less than the best. And they must have the best. And this is only one of a series, one of a series of facilities that we have been putting down to help the development of our people. The use of sports to build social cohesion, particularly in the Guyanese society, was also noted by the president. In the future, we will work towards building indoor facilities in all the various counties of our country, in Essequibo, Demerara, and Barbies, to build more facilities for our people so that they can have the possibility of having good facilities to develop their skills. I also hope that with these facilities, that the ministry will try to develop spotters, spotters of talent, because I'm sure among you there are many who say in bolts, many, many strong athletes, and we can use that spotting of talent in sports and in football, because this facility will also serve the football fraternity to spot talent and to be able to work a program to develop them so that we can grow from strength to strength. The president said that government believes that it is an investment in the future as it is designed to benefit youths in particular. We cannot afford to stand still. We cannot afford to go back. We have to continually set our eyes on the future and to, uh, for us to keep moving forward. We must not forget where we've come from and how far we have traveled in a short distance of time. But we are, it is very clear for us that in putting down the new physical and social infrastructure that our country can grow higher and higher. And we must not put that in danger at all. Because we know at one time our country was the top in the Caribbean, but it had been reversed and became the worst in the Caribbean by the, in two decades after. And therefore, we must never allow that to happen again. And let us work to continue to build peace, progress, and prosperity right across this land. It was revealed that the current 100 and 200 world record holder use in Bolt trains on a similar track in Jamaica. The facility can drain some six inches of rainfall in under an hour. Floodlights have been installed for night events and the stands are situated above multipurpose rooms. There are also administrative and medical facilities. 24 permanent staffers are employed including two Cuban coaches. Hence, the complete spectrum of track and field events can now be held locally and conducted to IAFF standards. Rugby and football are also catered for. That's all in this week's diary for the period April 11 to April 17, 2015. Before we go, these were some of the highlights. The head of state declares Ghana's first five-star hotel complex open. President Ramatar gets a first-hand look at ExxonMobil's drilling operations off the Asikribo coast and the president hits the campaign trail as he seeks to return to office with a clear parliamentary majority. Do join us again for the next program when we will bring you more of the president's activities. I'm Paul McAdam thanking you for watching us. For more information, contact us via email or visit our website. <laughs>